Now on Radio 4, the folk singer and songwriter Lisa Knapp explores the inspirational power of the shipping forecast. I don't remember first hearing it. It's just always been there. It's always been part of my life. There are warnings of gales in Viking, North at Sierra, South at Sierra, Rockhall, Hebrides, Bailey, Fair Isle, Faroes and South East Iceland. Night time is my favourite time to listen to it. The late night broadcast. It's after midnight. The door is closed. The lights are out. I'm tucked up in bed and in the darkness. My mind can begin to drift. And now the shipping forecast issued by the Met Office on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. That's when the very first sparks of inspiration came to me for my song, which I titled Shipping Song. Rock I've always lived in the city. I love the sea. I love being by the sea, but I'm no sailor. Yet, like so many of us, I'm fascinated by the shipping forecast. And I'm not the only land-loving artist to fall for its charms. Many musicians, poets and songwriters have found inspiration among the gentle tones of the BBC's shipping forecast. From the poetry of Carol Ann Duffy and Seamus Heaney, to the music of bands like Radiohead, British Sea Power and Blur, from classical compositions, books, photography, paintings, comedy, the shipping forecast has inspired people from all spheres of the creative arts. Shipping forecast till noon tomorrow. Devised by Vice Admiral Robert Fitzroy in 1861 as a warning system for vessels around the British Isles, the shipping forecast was first broadcast by the BBC in 1925 and 90 years on is still transmitted four times a day on BBC Radio 4. But why do poets and songwriters find it so inspiring? What is it about the shipping forecast, something us land dwellers have no real need for, that gets our creative juices flowing? One of my favourite works inspired by the forecast is Seamus Heaney's Glanmore Sonnet 7. It puts a lump in my throat every time I hear it. The poem springs from a love of the melody of the shipping forecast, the BBC shipping forecast, which we used to hear at close down of the radio in Glanmore. Dogger, Rockall, Malin, Irish Sea. Green swift upsurges, North Atlantic flux conjured by that strong gale warning voice. I love this bit. Collapse, collapse into a sibilant into a penumbra. Sibilant penumbra. Midnight, Midnight and close and down. Close down. Sirens, Sirens of, of the, the tundra, tundra of eel road, seal road, keel road, whale road, raise their wind compounded keen behind the bays and drive the trawlers to the lee of Wicklow. L'Etoile, Le Guillemot, La Belle Hélène nursed their bright names this morning in the bay that toiled like mortar. It was marvellous and actual. I said out loud, a haven. The word deepening, clearing, like the sky elsewhere on Minches, Cromarty, the Pharaohs. Seamus Heaney in 1980, reading Glanmore Sonnet 7. I like that particularly because it mentions the radio aspect of it, midnight and close down. When the radio closes down and everybody goes to bed and we just do this checklist of the, the storms out at sea. That's just such a lovely uh, image. To me, the forecast generates this sense of being cradled, cosseted and cosy, while all these nautical dramas are being enacted in the dark seas around us. While we snuggle up with a hot water bottle and a cup of tea, it's our bedtime story. The shipping forecast is like a lullaby. Poet and broadcaster Sean Street also enjoys the dreaminess of the late night broadcast. I think it's probably a favourite time to hear it because I'm in that 
cloistered situation where rural binges sailing by has got to be fairly close. I may be him drifting into sleep and the troubles of the day are outside, everything's locked away. And here it comes, these strange elemental places seeping under the door. There are warnings of gales in Viking, North Utsira, Hebrides, Bailey, Pharaohs. Ah, yes, those elemental places. Rockall, Viking, North Utsira. Every time I hear that word, I have to pronounce it Utsira. It's such a strange sounding word. These places sound mythical, so otherworldly. They are what first inspired me and intrigued me about the forecast. In fact, Lundy and Fastnet were the names of roads near my aunt's house, where I spent summers as a child. I've always been enchanted by them. Lundy, Fastnet. When I was writing Shipping Song, I played around with the sounds of these mythical places. German Finding the rhymes and rhythms within them. There's a poetry in them that fascinates me. Many writers have been drawn to the rhythm and melody of the shipping forecast. Sean Street is one of them. As reflected in his poem, Shipping Forecast, forecast Donegal. Donegal. They have shared still late October. But salt stones and a broken tree, the peeled paint on the lifeboat house, chime with places where the glass falls. Prime sources encountering nights bold predictions. I wanted to reflect the sheer poetry of the forecast itself, this litany that it actually is. It almost doesn't need a poem because it is a poem. I didn't want to lose that meditative quality that is in the forecast. Fair Isle, Faroes, South East Iceland, North Atzira, South Atzira, Fisher, German Bight, Tyne, Dogger. This pattern of names on the sea, weathers unlistening geography, paves water. Beyond the music, the singing of sounds, this minimal chanting, this ritual paired to the bone, becomes the cold poetry of information. The forecast does have a distinctive style of delivery. Ian Anderson from the band Jethro Tull. They wouldn't let me read it. They probably wouldn't let you read it. You've got to have this measured, clear-cut diction, this very clear-cut way of delivering, and stick to the format, because people listening to it professionally do need to have only the information delivered in the appropriate order in, in exactly the right way. Therein lies that strange, pragmatic poetry, which is the shipping forecast. Ian Anderson utilised the shipping forecast on Jethro Tull's 1979 album Stormwatch and on this track, North Sea Oil. I had asked Francis Wilson, the uh, weatherman from the Commercial Channel. I picked a few lines that seemed to me iconic phrases you would hear on the, the shipping forecast. It's not just the magic of, of the words and the bewildering arrange of uh, Tynes and Doggers and Malins and Hebrides. It's actually, who is this person? Because you perhaps conjure up a vision of who it is reading it. And you're probably completely and utterly wrong. Southwest by South 4, 10 miles, 1,010, rising slowly. I'm standing outside BBC Broadcasting House in the heart of London. It feels really far from the sea here, amongst all the noise and the traffic and just the hubbub of London life. But it's here, the shipping forecast is broadcast from four times a day. I'm about to go inside to watch the forecast being transmitted live. The shipping forecast has always been something that stirred my imagination, so I have a little bit of trepidation in that I don't want to forever after this day be imagining a small grey square room. Well we shall see after the broadcast but I'm really excited. Okay let's go. Door closing. 
Hello. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Jim. Hello. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you and too. Thank you very much for letting us sit in on welcome this broadcast. To, welcome to Radio 4. My name's Jim Lee. I'm an announcer at Radio 4. BBC News at midday. Now the shipping forecast issued by the Met Office on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. There are warnings of gales in Viking, North at Zero, Cromarty, Trafalgar, Fitzroy, Shannon, Rockall, Malin, Hebrides. I may Spain, think of that room actually, but I think as I was listening to it again, you know, your mind just travels with the words and the images just spring to mind. So I think it obviously innately has that quality that wherever you are when you listen to it, if you're that way inclined, or even if you're not, probably. It just takes you off. Westerly, six to Gale eight, veering westerly four or five. What do you think about when you're reading it? Silly things, really. You kind of split your brain in half. And one's reading the shipping forecast, and the other one's thinking, now oh, I've got this timing right. Did I book my taxi? Did I turn the gas off at home? And in the early days, occasionally I used to think, I wonder if Princess Margaret is listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually much more animated than I thought it was going to be. There was a lot more gear around screens and faders and machines. Southwest four or five. Okay. Most of the time, our brains are involved in the timings, so we don't crash the pips at five seconds to the hour. And there's an art in that, isn't there? Because no one is thinking that you're thinking that. There's a lot going on in here, so you don't really have too much time to dwell on the, uh, on the romance of the shipping forecast. To any extent does it feel poetic at all to you? We hear this all the time. No, because everything has a meaning. I mean, I'm not a shipping forecast expert, but I kind of know what all that refers to. So you're kind of splitting it up by minute pauses into the weather patterns like the wind speed and the weather conditions and the visibility and things like that. It's got a language of its own, a rhythm of its own. It's a very special part of our job. Carolyn Brown has been reading the shipping forecast for over 20 years and is also a keen sailor. I can hear the poetry within it, but I think possibly because I'm a sailor, to me, the information will always trump that. I'll always be aware of the people trying to make sense of it, trying to draw the maps in their heads or on a piece of paper. And when I hear somebody else read it, that's when I get that sense of the poetry. I'm glad I do have time to dwell on the romance of the forecast. I think therein lies part of the charm, that within that cold poetry, poetry of, information. of information, that calm delivery, there's space for our imagination to wander. We can visualise the map of seas around the UK, dream up watery tales and voyage into fantastical stories. Songwriter Damon Albarn blended many of those beautiful and mysterious sea area names into Blur's 1994 song, This Is Alone. Here's Damon talking in 1995. A journey of the mind through the sort of the, the shipping forecast starting at the, the Thames and going right around the country. sedative for me to sort of close my eyes and, and, and this travel with, with the broadcaster, the announcer. Imagine what's going on on all the ships. Up the time for There's a low in the, high the shipping forecast seems to have become ingrained in our cultural landscape. Ian Anderson. It's a tradition, it has that soporific quality, that unique sense of slightly eccentric Britishness. And in a way, perhaps because it talks about those sea areas which surround uh, the British Isles, it reminds us of our, of our maritime and national identity, you know, being an island race. We are folks surrounded by water. Whether you are 
lying in your bed on storm-tossed rock in Cornwall or bang in the middle of the UK, then mm. it's what links us to that feeling of connection to the sea and the, and the elements. I suppose I do feel a connection to the sea somehow, though I've never spent much time on it. I'm very conscious that in the UK, the sea has shaped our history, our geography, our landscape. Perhaps it's time to remind myself what the open water feels like. So I'm here on the beach in Dover. On my left are the famed white cliffs protruding out into the sea there. There's the castle on top, Dover Castle. Oh, look, there's a huge ferry there. A big, big one on its way to France, probably. The sea's looking very calm, and with the sun coming out now, we've got a lovely sort of silken, silvery top to it. I'm here to experience the shipping forecast from the perspective of being on the sea, as opposed to being tucked up in my bed. Hi, Lisa. Lovely pleased to, to meet, meet you. you. Yeah, and thank you so much for taking us out today. Yeah, that's all right. Well, what we're going to do now, we're going to go over to the to the marina itself, okay. and we've got a really fast rib. We'll get on board, do a bit of a safety briefing, and actually go to sea proper, and we'll be bouncing around a bit, but hopefully you'll get the feel of what it's like when the wind's blowing. Fantastic. What's a rib? Oh, that's a rigid inflatable boat. Wow. <laughs> With a powerful <laughs> outboard engine on it. Okay, let's go. You ready? Yep. <laughs> it's a long time since I've been on a boat, so um, yeah, I'm quite excited. Cyclonic 5 to 7, becoming southwest, severe gale 9, perhaps storm 10 later. It's got a whole different set of uh, jargonistic ways of talking about the weather, hasn't it, to an ordinary weather forecast in land? Yes you know cyclonic and, Storm force and the, yeah all, all those yes. and they're, they're so much more dramatic so, mm -hmm. you know so much more going on it seems out at sea and probably thankfully we're not having to endure it inland but that sort of all adds to the the soup of it in in the imagination Andy Roberts works with Dover lifeboat and has been a coast guard for 30 years so do you know what the forecast is for today? I think we've got southeasterly force three. Can you translate that a bit? It's very slight seas, or slight seas, and a strongish breeze. OK, everyone sitting comfortably, you ready to go to sea? Certainly are. Here we go, then. <laughs> Someone whose work I think really captures the movement and drama of the shipping forecast weather, of the wind and the sea, is Cecilia McDowell. In the first part of her shipping forecast choral work, she has set to music the words of Sean Street's evocative poem, Shipping Forecast Donegal. The shipping forecast, I have felt a really strong attachment to listening to it. And although now I understand much more what it's about, to begin with, I really hadn't a clue. It was just the poetry, rather like a, an incantation, that appealed to me. Fair Isle, Fair Isles, South East Iceland, North Atsira, South Atsira, Fisher, German Bites, Time, Dogger. Sean Street. Most of us hear it, don't understand it, but that doesn't matter because it's not really for us. 
it's for somebody else who does understand it and it's crucial for them that's probably the most extraordinary thing about it that we love it without knowing what it means most of the time are there any particular words that really ring out for you there's a word icing which i do remember years ago thinking cool that sounds tasty <laughs> um but the icing i realize is something so dangerous and something that all seafarers need to be aware of strange things like veering and backing and it's only recently that i knew what backing meant that mm. backing is when the wind changes and goes anticlockwise but before then it could have been anything and the sequence of of words as well i mean there's something lovely about hearing moderate squally showers squally showers <laughs> good yes yeah. really yes What's good about that <laughs> there are some parts of the forecast that are really important the pressure levels the wind directions and also we talk about falling more slowly falling quickly these are all really key words for people at sea to hear and understand what's happening next as a lay person those words are really evocative because i don't really know what they mean technically but i know they mean something yes and so they're familiar and yet really strange at the same time it's like a mantra isn't it it that really just is like a spell a charm north Utsira and south Utsira, i find that really quite beautiful and eloquent as much as anything it is the recitation of the place names viking because south those place Sierra, names horses, Fisher, are Weber, shorthand Weber. for wild places they are remote places that most of us will never go to. But because we don't, the idea of them Fitzroy, becomes strong. Sol, Lundy, the areas have a sort of mythical, uh, yes. you know, there are these far distant places, because I think if we think of those areas of water, most of us would just think of the name of the sea or the channel. We don't think of those names. Yes, but Rockall yes, and... Yes, there's just these sort of far distant series and pharaohs. Things going on. Yes. You know, the Greek gods are out and they're whirling up storms. I think it's the poetry's in the names, isn't yes. it? It's, um, yeah. They have a kind of magic of their own. Seven is a near gale, because a gale is force eight. Then there's a severe gale nine. Right. Then there's a storm ten. The storm is at ten. Yeah, then oh. severe storm eleven. Then hurricane force oh, goodness twelve. Me. So we've pulled up. How many hundred yards are we from the coast there? Andy. We're about uh, 400, 400 meters, meters off the beach. Okay, so it's a fair distance to swim. <laughs> yes. So we're going to just sit here and tune in to the forecast. Let's, let's, let's hope, hope there's no hurricane. hurricanes. <laughs> and if there is, let's hope it's later and soon and certainly not in the night. Here we go. Synopsis at 0600, intense high, northwest Russia, 1053. Dover, White, Portland, Plymouth, variable, mainly southeast, three or four, mainly fair, moderate, occasionally poor. The significant part of that forecast was the visibility, moderate and poor, occasionally poor. So that's, that's referring to visibility. Visibility, right? yes. Because so they said fair as well, didn't it, they? Yeah, it, if it's poor visibility, and because there's so many ships out there, and the traffic lanes are very, very busy, yeah. then you've got to be very careful if the visibility goes down. Yeah, I bet. Many was the night when I had sat in um, a wind and rain blown cockpit of a boat with a torch rammed between my teeth, scribbling down the shipping forecast on a slightly soggy piece of paper so that I could figure out what my next move was going to be in the boat, you know, whether it was safe to cross the channel or whether it was going to be too windy and we ought to head back. So for me, it had been literally a matter of life and death, I suppose, at one point. Speaking to Andy and Carolyn has made me more aware than ever of the critical importance of the shipping forecast for the safety of those out at sea. I feel like I'm listening in to a secret code in a language I don't really understand. I have the luxury that I don't need to understand it. It's a reminder of how lucky I am not to be facing those hurricane winds or 20-foot waves. 
But those pictures that the forecast paints in our minds remain so powerful. The images that, that I think we get from the shipping forecast are about crashing waves against rocks, of lifeboat men having to set sail. It, it's that vulnerability that thrills us, that scares us, and yet that strange sense of being able to hunker down against adversity and bad weather and wait out the storm. You know, that's something rather reassuring. It's always that sense of being warm and cosy, knowing that something else out there which is scary and threatening and, and rather romanticized, rather like some Victorian painting of a shipwreck. It's something that is out there. It's otherworldly. There's just a tiny element of slight pragmatism about it, seeing that we're sort of floating in a boat in the sea, but it's still just as magical and mythical as it always is, I think. Just gazing over there, it's foggy and I can't actually see anywhere else. So I think the places just exist in your head still. And being on the sea is also quite magical, I think. And it's so calm today and beautiful. I think I probably would have felt quite differently if it was stormy. <laughs> It's quite bizarre sitting at sea with, with yourself <laughs> and asking about the forecast. I mean, I've never really looked on it in a kind of emotive way, but um, actually in your presence it makes it a bit more emotive. Listen to everything you say, Lisa. Anyone who's spent any time at sea ends up having a great love for the sea, but also a great respect for it. It's something that I think stays inside you, and even if you have only stood on a pier that's being lashed by waves or seen a dramatic seascape from afar. It's something that actually lodges itself in your mind and the shipping forecast will always bring that floating back to the surface of your, your memories. The shipping forecast stirs up an alluring combination of juxtapositions. Perhaps that's what makes it such a rich source of inspiration. It paints pictures of danger while it soothes and comforts. Dramatic, threatening weather is reported cool and calmly. It is simultaneously familiar and strange, wild and homely, mundane and magical. It makes those of us on land drift out to sea. Shipping Songs was presented by Lisa Knapp. The producer was Lorna Skingley and it was a smooth operations production for BBC Radio 4. Do you know your Viking from your Lundy? Is your visibility moderate? Wind? Cyclonic? Can you pronounce all the sea areas correctly? Or why not play our shipping forecast quiz? Set sail for the Radio 4 website to test your knowledge now and if you need any help, today's shipping forecast is about to be read on Radio 4 Longwave shortly.